In this section, we're going to look at applying materials. First, I'm going to go into the ribbon bar and select the display tab. Then I'm going to select assign visual materials. This will change the viewport to advanced studio mode so you can see the materials when you've applied them to your parts. In the assembly navigator, I'm going to turn off a few parts. This is so I can only see the parts that I need to when I'm applying the materials. Next, I'm going to change my selection mode to solid body. Now I will select the bodies I want to assign the material to. For this, I'm selecting areas of building facade that are going to be uh, made from brick. Once selected, I'm going to find a brick material in the system studio materials. In the library, I'm going to open up the architectural materials folder and select bricks red. This material will then be applied to all the parts that I have selected. Now, rather than selecting the bodies one by one, I will use the selection filter that selects based on color the assigned body. In the selections tab, in the ribbon bar, I will first reset my filters. Then, under more, select color filter. In this new window, you can select a color from the palette or by clicking on a body. Now with solid body selected, I can drag a selection box over the whole model and only the bodies that have that color applied to them will be selected. Thank you for watching. In this section, we're looking at customizing a material. First, I will select the Siemens logo in the model and apply plastic black from the SVM library. Now in the Studio Materials in Part tab, you can see the materials that you have previously assigned to the model. These are all in the Visual Materials folder. Find Plastic Black Material. Right click and select Edit on the Plastic Black Material. This will bring up the Visual Material editing window. We are now going to start by changing the name of the material to Plastic Petrol. Under Colour, I will click on the colour swatch. This will bring up the colour editor. I am now changing this colour to the Siemens Petrol Blue using the RGB values. Then click OK. You can now see the plastic black previously assigned to the logo has changed to petrol blue. Thank you for watching. In this section, we're going to look at customizing materials with textures. In the studio materials in part, right click on a material and select edit. In the visual materials editor, in base under color, click on the texture preview icon to open the Windows browser. Navigate to the new texture file which will be a bitmap image. Select this and then OK to change it. You can now see this has altered the material in the preview window. Because this is a custom material, we would recommend that you change the name of it for referencing it later. Now in the parameters go to finish. Here you can add more textures to alter details of the material such as bump and roughness depending on the finishes that you are requiring. You can now add these using the same method as the base colour texture. Thank you for watching. In this section we're going to look at setting up a camera. Go to Part Navigator. Then on the camera's title, right click and then create. This will create a camera based on how the viewport is currently. The image preview of the camera will be found in the top right of the viewport and two manipulators to move the camera and the target. A new window will appear that contains the camera settings. First of all, give your camera a name. Then set the aspect ratio. I am setting mine to 16 by nine, which is the same as like HDTV. You can now lock the camera to the target or vice versa by checking these two boxes. Adjust the camera using the two manipulators until you have the view right. You can now change the camera lens. 
There are preset lenses or you can adjust the zoom or field of view. I would recommend doing this before you perfecting your camera position. Once you are happy, click OK and then you are done. In this section we're looking at lighting and then rendering. Firstly, under the display tab in the ribbon bar, select style and then studio. Then go into the system scenes and select a scene. Open the ray trace studio window to see the interactive ray trace view of your scene. To add your own environment, first select more and then scene preferences. Click the folder icon next to choose image file. Then open a custom HDRI file. You can adjust the angle of the HDR rotation in rotate angle. This means that we can change the direction of where the light is coming from. The background of the render can be either a 360 environment dome or 2D image. To use a 2D image as a black plate, go to background and change from environment to 2D background. In the drop down, select image file. Select the folder icon next to the choose image file and then open the image that you want to use as a background. Here we're doing some final tweaks to make sure we are happy with our environment settings ready to do the final render. Click apply then OK when finished. When you are ready to create a final render, open the Ray Trace Studio preferences from within the Ray Trace Studio window. To set an image size, first in the drop down under size, select user define. Then change the image width. This is measured in pixels. You will see the height automatically changes. This is due to the aspect ratio that we set within the camera settings before we open the Ray Trace Studio window. To increase the image quality, we recommend that you set the render duration to number of iterations. The higher the number of iterations, the better the quality. But please note this does have an impact on your render times.